Recently, tech enthusiast Digital Foundry built an Xbox Scarlet and PS5 like PC with current hardware to prove that next generation will finally be an actual generational leap. But just the cost to meet a new console with a desktop PC build says a lot about how fast hardware and tech is evolving and how expensive it can be to keep up with the latest in graphics and performance. This is Colt Eastwood. Today we're going to break down the desktop hardware required to meet the standard that Xbox Scarlet and PS5 will bring to console gaming in 2020. We don't have the full accurate specs of the next generation consoles, only the architecture, target power, and general hardware. We're going to revisit this right here in full on my channel when the full specs are revealed February 2020. But for now, if you're good with the discussion on the hardware target and what it looks like as a PC gamer on your wallet, hit the like and subscribe button. If you've been with the channel a while and want to support the content, join the channel for early access and much more. At the very end of this video, if you want to stick around, I have additional information and benefits for those that want to support the channel. For the rest of you, let's have a look at what it takes to build a next generation console-like PC. Next generation Xbox Scarlet and PS5 are Navi and Zen 2 based consoles with semi-custom AMD hardware powering a box that is no longer bound by 30 FPS. Hardware accelerated ray tracing has also been confirmed for both PS5 and Xbox Scarlet and that is an important factor in the quest to build a new PC that will keep up with the new consoles launching in 2020. One assumption we have to make among many is what marketing experts and industry leaders agree that PS5 and Scarlet will launch at $500 or lower, but let's keep it at $500. Disclaimer, PC will always be the most powerful and the most cost varied option for gaming with near limitless power. This video does not imply that consoles can be more powerful than a PC, but looking at cost, the next generation area is very gray. Basic requirements for a Scarlet and PS5 like PC build are as follows. A fast capable CPU that can reach up to 3 GHz. A GPU with enough memory bandwidth and VRAM for 4K gaming. Hardware accelerated ray tracing and an SSD. Digital Foundry built an impressive PC with all of the amenities of a next generation console with a couple of fundamental flaws. First off, they never communicated the cost of the build, which is absolutely essential to deciding on a console or a PC purchase. I'll spare you the suspense on the cost, and I'll tell you that in the US, that build that Digital Foundry did would cost as much as $1,200 to $1,500. It all starts with an ASUS B450F motherboard for $120, but you can find a Ryzen compatible motherboard cheaper for about $80, and that brings me to their second flaw. First of all, we know that the next-gen consoles will have Zen 2 CPU cores. Eight of them with 16 threads have now been confirmed for the PlayStation 5 at least, and I expect the Xbox to be the same. So we've chosen a Ryzen 7 3700X. The second flaw. A Ryzen 3700X is a $340 CPU, which meets the architecture requirements of Zen 2 of next-generation consoles, but it is also wildly more powerful and faster than the console's Zen 2 semi-custom chip would ever need to be. Going forward, a PC doesn't have to have Zen 2 architecture, so I'd opt instead for a Zen Plus Ryzen 2700X, a 3.7 GHz CPU that is almost half the price at $200. The GPU Digital Foundry chose was the AMD Radeon 5700 XT, which is very close to the GPU power in Navi, that the Xbox Scarlet and PS5 have been confirmed to be built on. The Radeon 5700 XT is a $400 GPU and already you can see this incomplete build is well over budget of a console. But this GPU does not support ray tracing, so instead I'd recommend the RTX 2070. Some would say the RTX 2070 Super to better match the Navi GPU power. But this meets the minimum requirements since not all games will support hardware accelerated ray tracing. Many are incredulous that the new consoles can render ray trace reflections and lighting, but expect the consoles to run an optimized, reduced level of ray tracing to keep performance on target at 60 FPS. In other words, medium settings with dynamic resolution. 
If developers choose to use this feature, the RTX 2070 is a $450 GPU and essential to enjoy gaming with lifelike lighting and reflections. And big games will definitely have this feature as an option next generation. Even if they are at medium settings, this is likely the settings that a PC gamer would use on a build near this price range. Digital Foundry added 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and when coupled with the GPU VRAM, gets us just over what the PS5 and Scarlet may have in the shared memory pool. And 16 gigabytes of desktop RAM is an additional $75. And all of this will be loaded onto a one terabyte solid state hard drive for $140 which will get you into games faster with very minimal loading times. SSDs have been around for a while on PC and are becoming more affordable, but it's a nice late addition to console gaming. To power all this, you'll need a 650 watt power supply, which adds $50. A case can be whatever you want, as cheap as 60, and you're just about done. Digital Foundry included a UHD disk drive for playing movies, but we'll skip that. But we do need a mouse and keyboard or a controller to play games, so let's pretend you bought a $30 mouse and keyboard or a cheap wired gamepad. Windows is practically free at this point or as low as $10, so we'll skip that too. The PC rig that is purpose built to match or exceed a next generation PlayStation and Xbox is going to cost you just about $1,100. This PC will be at or above the performance of next generation consoles for the life cycle until the next generation launches in 2026. But in 2020, when the PS5 and Scarlet launch, new hardware will be out and these prices may take a 15 to 20% price reduction down to around a $900 or $1,000 build. I know what you're thinking. On PlayStation and Xbox, you have to pay for online, and over the course of six years, that's an additional $270 or $300, which evens the playing field with a $900 to $1,100 PC. Console gamers should not be required to pay for online, but on Xbox, gold is free with purchases in Microsoft Rewards, and PS Plus covers the cost of the services if you didn't have to buy two or three of the games they give you per year. But the barrier to entry with a comparable PC to PS5 and Scarlet is up front. While console gamers, especially on Xbox, can essentially dissolve the year cost of Xbox Live through rewards or Game Pass Ultimate, which saves them about $120 a year on first party games. Unfortunately, the paywall to play online will never go away and this is just something we have to face. The console that would be $500 could essentially cost you almost $800 after the cycle is over because of those online services. As next generation rolls closer and gaming consumers get ready to spend $500 on the next brand new console, there will always be PC gamers that choose to stay with their current rig or look to upgrade to keep up or surpass the latest hardware available on console. Just as it was with the Xbox One X, the first year or longer is decidedly difficult to match the price per performance and even more so next generation which will require a much more capable and more expensive CPU than the PS4 and Xbox One had. If you'd rather spend four to $500 on a new GPU, by all means, have at it, enjoy the benefits of the incredible power increase and visual upgrades on your computer. If you'd rather stick to your favorite console's ecosystem and game library on PlayStation and Xbox, go ahead, enjoy it. If you'd like to pair a new PS5 and skip Xbox with a new PC build, and still retain bragging rights, just understand, it's going to cost you considerably more up front. And with that, you may find more in the overall experience that PC allows. But be excited, next generation is going to push games forward and consoles are going to push PCs. And in the end, no matter where you decide to play, we all have a lot to look forward to. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching and making it this far into the video. If you did make it this far and haven't backed out, type in the comments, Picaro. If you stick around even longer, I've got some extra information about the channel because it's been changing a lot. But first, I've got to say that this was a difficult video to make. I really didn't want to part out PC prices, especially this early, but last week I reached out to Digital Foundry and asked, why don't you communicate the cost of the PC that you compare to the Pro and the X? Because they always use what I've parted out as a $1,200 PC and it usually offers negligible increased visual quality at double the frame rate for almost triple the price. 
I'll say that again. A $1,200 PC offers a visual quality upgrade and double the frame rate for triple the price of a console. Digital Foundry told me, you're in luck, we just built this Scarlet and PS5-like PC. That was well over $1,500 before I made the adjustments here, like the CPU, dropping out the UHD drive and stuff like that. I'd like to drive home that a PC does so much more and can be tailored to your own preference. But just know what you're getting into cost-wise. If you want to support the channel and this content, like and subscribe to the channel. I am at 75,000 subscribers, which is very cool. If you want to talk to me outside of the comment section, add me on Xbox Live and Twitter at Cold Eastwood. But there's so many more places to hear from and support the channel, and this is for those that wanted to stick around long enough to hear it. All right, if you've followed me or watched enough of my videos, you know that I'm a one-person production. I'm a graphic designer by trade, a video producer on the side for this channel. I create most all of my infographics and artwork for the channel. I also designed custom logos for hundreds of gamers in the community. If you want one of those, email me a request, and I'll get you an estimate at coldeastwooddesign at gmail.com. I'm a regular member of the RDX podcast that talks about console gaming news every Tuesday night on Dealer Gaming's channel, and we've reached an audience of over 2 million people in two years the show is run. I've launched a merchandise section on my channel sponsored by Teespring. Here you'll find my Be Nice logo wear, channel art, custom design items, and RDX podcast logo wear. I am frequently designing new shirts and hoodies and designs on my page, and the prices are set very low so more people can buy the items I create. This will really help grow the channel and help you strike up great conversations about gaming with people. Another way you can support the channel is the join button and my Patreon. All links are in the description. Joining is just $5 for YouTube and $2 on Patreon. All members will get instant access to videos, which I usually finish ahead of time a day or two before I post them live. You also get custom badges of my favorite Xbox characters in the comment section that shows you're a member of the channel. I also talk to members on the community pages and share screenshots, graphics I've created, and thumbnail designs. I create about one video a week, and that's about all the time I have with a full-time job, family, and production that takes me six to eight hours but I wouldn't trade it for the world. When I sit down to edit, it could be almost as enjoyable as the games I play and record for the channel. I've invested a lot into this channel with a fast PC, 4K capture card, and the best games I can play and speak on, and any support you want to give the channel by joining the Patreon or joining YouTube will make it worth it. If you just want to watch and comment, that's super helpful and means a lot to me too. You can add me on Xbox, PSN, Instagram, and Twitter at Colt Eastwood. Steam at Colt Eastwood 99. I'm always looking forward to comments, feedback, and ideas in the comment section. Thank you so much for all your support and motivation to learn, create, and enjoy gaming. And most of all, help make this community a much better place and, you know, be nice. <laughs>